I made a really cool program. It counts as fast as a computer can count, but it only uses half of one CPU core. I made this in Java, still in Java X, my Java dialect, but now I am distributing simple JAR files without uh, any Java X overhead. In this case, it's 109 kilobytes. And let's run it. It is counting. Let's check if it actually uses only half a core. Here we see the most active threads, and in fact, it is well below 50%. The program itself also keeps some stats. Uh, here is the almost 50% number again. And here it says uh, how many numbers it crunches or just counts here. The, that's the kind of the increment statement. And it turns out it's um, 1 billion per second. It's a little less than one nanosecond for each uh, increment of the variable. I think it's a very good result seeing as the processor has something like 2 gigahertz. So every other clock cycle we are getting an increment. It's pretty nice. Also shows you how well Java actually optimizes. Here's the loop in Java X, which is almost like Java. Uh, while true, here's the increment. And this um, checks for the on-off status. There's another part of the program that uh, 100 times a second or 200 times a second actually switches the on-off switch. And this loop in here is notified via a ping mechanism. It's a quite elegant mechanism that I came up with that uh, allows threads to be uh, interrupted at any point. So this is what the ping does. But usually this will return false, meaning there is no special action to be taken and the loop can just continue. So the goal was to make this loop as fast as possible while still being interruptible at any increment. Every time this huge counter in the billions is incremented. Every time after that, it checks if it should go to sleep because the off switch is on, you know, the on switch is off anyway, uh, because it should sleep. And in case it did sleep for a little, little bit, it also prints its uh, statistics. So how did I get this loop so fantastically optimized? Well, Java actually does it pretty well when you use the right constructs in Java. Uh, here's the assembly code, actually, and this is the inner loop. Um, there's only one thing that confused me at first, but it's uh, Java specific, so you can't change that. It's called safe pointing, because Java also has a mechanism to interrupt threads, which are called safe pointing for garbage collection and whatever, but it's, uh, it's Java internal. I cannot access this mechanism, piggyback on it in my Java code. So there are actually two variables being checked in each loop iteration. First is my ping action, and the other is the save pointing. So here's the actual loop, jump loop body, and that would be here. First it's checking the ping action, just loading one variable, which is marked volatile, so it can be changed by other threads. If the action is null, no action defined, we just jump straight back into the loop up here. Here we do the save point check, or prepare it actually. The actual save point uh, poll is uh, done here. And in between these two, we have the increment, which is just adding one to an internal register. So this goes to show that even in Java, you can make things that are really optimized down to the metal. Like, I mean, two clock cycles for each loop iteration. I think that is very, very nice. The results I got are actually very similar between my ThinkPad here and uh, a virtual server. Exactly the same number. And the third server is a dedicated server. And that's a tiny bit faster. The server manages 0 0.8 milliseconds per number, but it's all in the same ballpark. Uh, I did this 50% on-off thing because I want to make the Gazelle V uh, tool application thing AI magic stuff. Here's the prototype. 
And Gazelle V is supposed to use only um, at most one core. Most computers have between two, four, eight, or 16 cores. And I want to use at most one of these, a better half of a core, so you don't notice it. The point is to make this run in the background. It grabs uh, screenshots all the time with a varying speed. Uh, you get a few frames per second, usually. And it analyzes these screenshots, which is still to be done. And it will understand everything that's on your screen. That is the lofty goal, but it's possible. I had the latest um, inspiring ideas relating to image recognition. Uh, compressing an image is uh, a very important part. But compressing it in a flexible and smart way that also makes us understand the image. We don't only want to compress images to very small byte sizes. That's a side effect, that's neat. But uh, the main thing is to understand the image. What are we looking at? And I think this latest breakthrough, when I render it into code, will yield an actual image recognition that is very, very useful. Still not using neural networks, but we don't need them if we have JavaX. All right, bye-bye.